Hey, everybody, it's attorney Justin Lovely. I'm coming at you live again from Red Rock, Harley Davidson. I'm with two of the best motorcycle lawyers in the country that are great trusted referral partners that I send cases to all the time. I learn a lot from these guys every time we meet together. I want to introduce you to Noel Leonard. He's from Alabama. Great resource down in that state. And then, of course, my friend Chris Klotz. You may have seen him on some other videos. I've been tagged in with What's some enamel motorcycle giveaways. Guys, how y'all doing? Doing good, are man. Are you tired? It's been a long day. Easy flight in today, man. You yeah. know, just, you know, not that bad. So you, you're, you're coming from Pensacola as your main, your main yep. practice area. You're in what part of Alabama? I'm down on the Gulf Coast, but I uh, work throughout the state. Statewide pr practice. Primarily up in the Birmingham, Tuscaloosa area. Cool deal. Cool deal. And where's the main office? South the Alabama? main office is in Foley. We're 11 miles from the Gulf of Mexico. What do you think about Saban retiring? I try not to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I went to Knoxville. I'm a Tennessee fan, so can't get along. Work for you. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, for sure. We found, we got a lot of guys from Alabama came to uh, Tennessee, I think. A couple of years, you guys flipped and came in. So I'm, I'm feeling good because they've beat our ass for, what, 12 years in a row now or something There's longer lot, than that. A lot of changes going on right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, cool deal. So, Noel, tell us about your motorcycle background, man. I know you handle motorcycle injury cases, and, you know, we were talking before the podcast. You've got a long history of riding and, and representing people. Tell us a little bit about your history. Uh, well, in fifth grade, I started riding. I was, I was 10 years old, got in trouble at school, and had to stay after school a lot. And one of the things I did when I went home with my partners in crime was we tinkered around little Honda 50s and stuff like that. Just started there, been doing it uh, ever since. Um, taught my son to ride, my brother rides, um, just been going as fast as I can for as long do, as I can. So you stay on you stay on the dirt. You mentioned the Honda 50, the dirt bikes. Or do you, uh, yeah, start, I started with dirt bikes and I rode enduros and motocross. Um, then when I moved into street bikes, obviously, I mean the Harley is just the way to go for me, and uh, I've been doing it all my life. Just you know, just second nature. How big is the uh, motorcycle practice as a part of your personal injury practice? Uh, well. In sheer numbers, it's uh, probably 10%, but uh, you can imagine that that's a much higher percentage of the actual income. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Cool deal. So why, why was it important for you to join NAML? Well, uh, so I met uh, Chris Best, who is a biker dad, several years ago, and when he heard me talking about uh, teaching my son to ride and taking classes with him, we started that conversation. It was him. I just ran into him by accident again years later. Um, I handled a case. We had clients in common with Chris Klotz, a um, case out of Gulf Shores, and um, just ignited a new friendship. It was uh, Biker Dad's suggestion. So I jumped on board, and, you know, it's just a great idea. It's been yeah. speeding along since. So Biker Dad's been a great resource for all of us, and yeah, Chris, you, you were the first guy to find him, I guess, right? And then well, you got us all in kind of in touch, and it was just perfect timing when we started NAML. One of the one of the things about Chris, and one of the things I love about working with Noel is that you know Chris is genuinely interested in only the best for the riding community and awareness and helping people who you know need help. And you know one of the things that I really liked about working with Noel when my law partner Eric and I were working on the um, the, the case that was a it was a wasn't a motorcycle case but it was a really serious um, injury case um, is he's really passionate. He's genuine, and the same thing about the motorcycle cases. You know, you, sometimes you meet people who are just up on a billboard, you know, oh, you know, yeah. you know tw twerking a you know a wrench on a motorcycle, and they really don't feel the community or give anything back to the community. But Noel gives back to the community. We try to give back to the community in Pensacola as much as we can, and that's one of the things that I really like about working with all you guys is you know with you on the cases that we've worked with on before with you and and you and Chris Best is is having a genuine interest in helping the people in the community that are riding motorcycles. Let everybody know how hard it is um, working a motorcycle case now since y'all's laws changed in Florida. I know that devastated a lot of you guys, and, but the consumer, the biker, doesn't understand it, how, how much more work and how much more uh, urgent the need to hire a motorcycle attorney quick, quickly after a wreck yep. it has become because of the way the laws change. I could talk about this for so long, but what happened in March of last year? A lot of a lot of the lawyers in Florida are calling it March Madness. What happened with the tort reform change in Florida? Your statute of limitations is shorter. It got cut in half. Um, and you have a more difficult time. I'm not even going to begin to try to explain it, but the most simple way they're going to try to explain it is that 
you don't get as much credit for your medical bills as you used to. And some of times if you, if you don't happen to have insurance, what you can be compensated for is tied to what Medicare might pay, which you know That's they don't pay anything. Out, and so outrageous. It's, um, is that the, like that in Alabama? No, fortunately that we we, we haven't still, come to that. You're yet. still good, but yeah, it's coming. But there's a lot of pressure you can imagine. Yeah, South Carolina, they're about to get rid of our joint several, and it's it's, just, it's it's happening everywhere, man. Yep, and and also you know another issue that changed again is contributory negligence. You know that changed. You know in in Florida it used to just be pure. Now it's yeah. you know it's a it's a it's a modified um, situation where. You know, it's just it doesn't work out favorable for people who have been injured at no fault of their own. And uh, That's so terrible, man. getting somebody on a case, you know, quick and fast um, can help you build a stronger case um, to the degree, degree that you still can. And so it's always best to get somebody on board as fast as you can. Yeah. And then this is more insanity coming out of Florida. Sorry, I'm picking on you for practice. No, man, you need to go, you to move on. to Alabama or come to South Carolina, man. At least you got better <laughs> laws. No, man. But they don't have to have insurance, bodily injury. No. Uh-uh. How insane is that, man? So, people don't you know, understand this. People do not understand this. You're risking. You're basically flipping a coin when you get behind a wheel and start driving every day in Florida. I would say that probably the, in the last five years, probably the four most serious cases that I've seen, which have been either paralysis, amputation, um, or you know, just life-changing cases, the at-fault party had ten thousand dollars of insurance or less. In Florida, as you know, you only have to have PIP coverage, which is personal injury protection, which only protects me, the driver. When I run over you on your motorcycle and I'm in my, you know, yeah. in my Chevy, um, as long as I have my 10,000 PIP do- coverage that covers me, I don't have to have bodily, bodily injury to cover you. And uh, I don't know, Noel, give us a summary of what Alabama's like. And Alabama's a little bit better. Alabama's got, what, a 25 yeah, minimum? Yeah, uh, it's surprising that Alabama would uh, have one of the, the most favorable uh, requirements there. But, yeah, you, you have to have $25,000 minimum liability, and any carrier that offers you a policy is required to offer you an equal amount of UIM and UM, and that can only be waived um, by, you, you've actually got to sign. You have to affirmatively decline that. So that's one of the forms that we're always looking for. And, the, you know, it, it rolls into the, another topic we've been talking about, the the, uh, the bullshit idea of full coverage. Oh, yeah. Uh, people like to sell you full coverage, and all they've sold you is a warm blanket. Yeah. Um, but it's amazing <laughs> how, hey, well, you can save money. And, and they're, on the Gulf Coast, I'm sure in, in Chris's area, too, we've got a lot of Latinos. And and so with limited English skills and limited understanding, they are, they're being told they're going to save money. In Alabama, UIM is about 10% of your total. Um, so it, it's just. Yeah. Well, and, South, hey, and hey, shout ahead. out. You are multilingual, are you not? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> so uh, there are a lot of uh, motorcycle lawyers out there. I actually ride. When you see an advertisement that says, uh, se habla espanol, you know, we speak Spanish here. Ask yourself, does the lawyer speak Spanish or do they just have some uh, high school graduate? Who, yeah, um, interpreting for them. Yeah, I, I have been speaking Spanish my whole life, uh, longer than I've been riding motorcycles, as a matter of fact. But, uh, yeah, so I, I'm into helping the uh, Hispanic community. There are not a huge motorcycle um, contingent in on the Gulf Coast of Alabama, but still do a lot of work with them it's an underserved market too and those guys when they're hurt they're scared they they, they fear just that they don't understand the legal part that we're going to be their advocate it's it's hard to kind of cross that threshold and really build that trust right a lack of understanding just leads to a bunch of irrational fears a lot of misunderstandings so it's good to be able to reach out to them and you know they know that they've got somebody to consult with but yeah, they're. Uh, have you taught the? Have you started doing these accident scene management classes yet? Uh, I haven't, but the good news is, I, I believe I just walked into pure serendipity. I think I'm going to uh, in Trustville, Alabama, which is in Jefferson County, outside of Birmingham. I think I've got one that's going in March that had been planned. Somebody withdrew. I'm stepping in. I Great, said, that's awesome. Heck yeah, I'm going to do it. And uh, and it turns out I uh, that's where I bought my first Harley was at the place it's in Trustville. It's meant to be, man. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Chris, and, you do them, right? Yeah. Yeah, we do them. You know, and we've got, uh, we actually are going to be collaborating on one over in Mobile. Um, we're working on a date. Biker Dad's, you know, helping us get a date set up, but it's going to be at the uh, probably 
probably hosted at the Mobile Harley. And, um, you know, we've been doing those for about three years now. And we've done the we've done the advanced course. We've done the basic course. And I've taken the basic course now probably four times in the advanced course one time. Yeah. Every time I learn something new and feel just a little bit more confident with my, you know, accent scene management skills because it, it you know, you're gonna see a wreck eventually. You're yeah. gonna you're gonna run up on a wreck as an yeah. accident as as a motorcycle rider. Do you have in either this is a question for both of you in your outside of ASM and outside maybe the basic Harley class that you can take, do you have any like uh, at your community college or any other traffic school that is doing any kind of advanced training that you could recommend to your clients? Anything as far as as far as like um, first aid or as no, far as, far as, like as riding. Riding, riding, yes. So there's a bunch of them in Pensacola. I'm not sure in Mobile. I know that there's classes at the Mobile Harley, but I I don't know. But we've got at the local community college at PSC. Um, I was at one um, at the towards the end of last year, and they do offer advanced riding courses, the uh, lock and lean courses. Do y'all have those yeah. where you are? So. Lock and well, lean, do y'all have that in, in I, your I area? I actually did mine at PSC. Uh, did you? I lived in Pensacola for many years. Oh. Uh, and so, yeah. I will tell you, there's a disconnect, though. That's the reason I brought this up. There's a disconnect with that class and, like, the safety training that we get with, like, ASM. And so these two need to meet together, and it's a hack. If y'all want to fill a class, go to this and try to get their list to fill your ASM. And then, same thing, recommend those advanced uh, riding courses to your ASM That's people. a great idea. Great and then idea. You just, you're hitting them every way you possibly can. And then hopefully we, as lawyers, can teach them about the insurance bullshit that we got to deal with so that we don't have to have those terrible conversations. There's no meat on the bone. There's nothing to get here. I mean, that's yep. the worst conversation that we have to have as lawyers. You yeah, know, it's remind terrible. me to write that down. Yeah, yeah, there you go. We will. <laughs> well, you know, that's another good idea, and I haven't thought about this, but, um, you know, we we're always looking for a way to kind of give back, and, you know, maybe maybe we can figure out how to give a scholarship to the Lock and Lean in our area. That, so now that you brought that up kind of made me start thinking about that. Yeah, 100%. That's why we're here, right? So, yep. so the reason we're here, everybody, too, is we're at the National Academy of Motorcycle Injury Lawyers, our annual meeting, and I'm with some of the top lawyers in the whole country and, uh, you know, they're in, uh, he's in the Pensacola market and uh, Noel's in Alabama market. And, you know, things that happen in Alabama and Pensacola and South Carolina, we, we, we pick up little nuggets that we can go back to our home states and basically get more for our clients. So, and it'll all trickle down ways we get cases, way we work cases, way we be more efficient in how we're moving a, moving a file to the finish line, uh, yep. trial techniques. All these things add up and, you know, there's only a select number of us here right and i don't see your competitors i don't see your competitors here you know we're we're taking the advantage to to stay number one in our markets yeah so. i mean it's it's this group what i love about NAML is it's not just about how to you know bring better service to your clients that you're representing in motorcycle cases it's also how can you wrap into delivery of legal services to your client to also in bettering the motorcycle riding community and how can you give back yeah 100 percent. because it's not just about 100%. taking it's not just about taking. What big events do you have in 2024 in Pensacola? So we don't really have any huge, you know, rallies and rides. There are some over about the closest to us is maybe in Fort Walton, Panama City area. Um, there's a couple of them in the year. Um, I don't know in Mobile. Do y'all have do y'all have any big motorcycle get-togethers there? Ours no, are smaller. Not, I, I don't, I'm not sure that all the calendars have come out. I'm uh, I don't I don't usually attend the Bama Jam. Right. Uh, but uh, no, I, Thunder Beach is the closest. Big, yep. big time thing. Yeah. Y'all, do you, do you keep it more local? I guess then you you sponsor like the local rides, the local little local mini rides. Rallies you know, events. we do a lot with um, we do a lot with the Harley dealership in uh, Pensacola. We're also very plugged in with Abate um, in in the Gulf Coast. Abate in our area, who is like very like minded about wanting to give back to the community and safety and awareness and lobbying for you know riders in Florida and so. Yeah. Well, that's stuff. a good that's a good segue to this noel and you tell me in alabama what about uh this is this is all everybody's having this issue helmet laws it's a big debate did you wear it or not what kind of laws do you have in alabama in regards to a helmet alabama you you have to wear a helmet your okay. uh your rider has to wear a helmet that's bottom line that's it you must wear a helmet um and it makes sense i, I lived in florida and i gotta say i, I went without a, a lid from time to time when i thought it was uh you know just an easy safe ride so i'm guilty of it as well but it ha having laid down a bike i can tell you that there's no reason not to wear one everybody should be wearing them and alabama has been pretty good with regard to that as well just laying down the law that's it do okay. 
everywhere. What about what about Florida? Florida, <laughs> Flor- Florida imagine, man, right? It's all about freedom <laughs> of choice, man. So yeah. <laughs> so you can choose not to wear a helmet. I and again, listen, I respect everybody's right to make their choices about their their safety issues, but I can tell you, it fires as, people as up. Many. People get very passionate about it, and I, I got to say that I am in favor of wearing helmets yeah. only because I have seen so seen many all, situations man, yeah. where if somebody had just been wearing a helmet, they would be alive or functional, and their family wouldn't be, you know, having to endure a huge tragedy because yeah. of what's happened. So, I am a big help proponent of wearing helmets. I also respect other people's, you know, right to make a decision. Um, but statistically, you're going to be much better off with a helmet. But in Florida, if you have ten thousand dollars, essentially, and I'm just summarizing here, there's a little more detail to it. But if you got ten thousand dollars in insurance as a motorcycle rider, then you can opt not to wear a helmet if you don't want to. But you got to have the you got to have the insurance um, in order to not wear the helmet. I think a lot of people don't know that. And I think if you're, I think it's sixteenth. I can't remember if it's 16 or under or 18 or under. you got to wear a helmet no matter what. Okay. So. And we're uh, in South Carolina. It's a free state unless you're under 21. So if you're right. 21 and under, you got to wear the helmet. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's, it's wild how it, we're all in the South, and it's different law every state. So Different law every state. Yep. Well, cool so. deal. So tell us all how to. Um, you know, I want to learn a lot. we got a couple more days of meetings, so I'm glad to learn more from you guys. And we're going to teach some more with a closed-door meeting, and then we're going to the, to the motorcycle auction. But just briefly, uh, tell us how to get in contact with you. Yeah, so uh, my name's Chris Klotz. I'm one of the partners at Stevenson Klotz Law Firm. My law partner is Eric Stevenson. He couldn't make it this trip. He's back at the house holding down the fort, and uh, we're in Pensacola, Florida. We also have an office in Mobile, Alabama. Our number is 850-444-0000, and we're at stevensonklotz.com. Cool deal. Noel? Noel Leonard. Uh, I am a sole practitioner, yeah, so it's just me and my staff. Um, I can be reached at 251-943-8638. I'm on the, if you look me up, I'm the only attorney named Noel, N-O-E-L, just like Christmas. So, uh, yeah, if I, if I can help, come find me. And and if uh, and, and if you're somewhere else, I mean, I, one of the things that we do is we, we point people to other resources, and that's 100%. another benefit that we're given to our clients is that I can say, hey, I'm not doing this. Uh, and I don't know if it, it's worth mentioning and how much you want to push this, but you guys uh, are licensed in Mississippi as well, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, so I practiced in Mississippi for 15 years before I moved to Florida about 15 years ago. And I'm in, I'm in Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and the District of Columbia. I haven't done that much in D.C. I've done a couple things up in D.C. I was up there in federal court last year. <laughs> wow. Well, we got so, the Gulf Coast covered. We're covered. Yep. We're ready to go. And I got you covered, Myrtle Beach, Charleston, a whole state of South Carolina. Yep. Guys, thanks for your time. I really appreciate man, it. thank you for putting this together, yeah, man. Justin. Thanks a bunch. So we're covered. Let's say it one more time. Florida. Lovely law firm. Yeah, lovely law firm. we got you covered. Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, D.C., South Carolina. So we're good. Right on. Guys, I'm signing off. It's MyrtleBeachBikerLawyer.com, powered by the lovely law firm, Injury Lawyers. We'll see you next time.